Here we are looking at generalized extreme value distribution fitting for quick extreme value risk analysis. We are loading the packages from our CRAN library tidyquant and library quant mod to first download our sample financial data. The package we are using to estimate our GEV is library in two extremes. This is a package originally designed for meteorologists to learn extreme value theory in a simple fashion. Here we are using it for financial data. Here we extract the data from Matt Dancho's tidy quant in a tidy verse tibble data frame not a XTS quant mod time series. Alien approaching. Warning. Biophysical experiments extremely dangerous to Earth people. Note well the program is very particular about the data it uses, so as a precaution I recommend you always ensure the data is in the in two extremes package format by converting the tibble format data with as in two extremes data object. Before we launch the in two extremes GUI we must first save the data to CSV file to import back into the GUI this seems convoluted, but I have found it saves time in the long run as loading financial data can be problematic. Once the GUI has launched we click on file and read data then we load our CSV file beware, click the header option if the data has titles above it. If the data has loaded correctly you will get the summary table shown. Once you have clicked on the analysis tab from the GUI, we then select the relevant data object in the box at the top, in this case there is only our in two extremes data object, we then move down to select our variable we are using to estimate our generalized extreme values with, in this instance we select SPY, then we leave the location and scale and shape values at their defaults they will be re-estimated when the procedure is run. Then for model type select GEV, you can select plot diagnostics now or run later in this case we will run after estimating parameters. There is a variety of extreme value distributions to choose from, GEV is the simplest and most robust to estimate with this package. For type we select the label returns. Then leave the defaults and click OK and the estimation procedure runs. We then select the plot tab and go down the menu items to select plot diagnostics. We then again select our in two extremes data object. And select the fitted parameters variable fit1. We then click OK to run the charts. In finance it is well known that usually the distributions of logarithmic returns behave leptokurtic, i.e. the distributions exhibit in comparison to a normal distribution function fatter tails and sharper peaks. This leptokurtic behavior is clearly demonstrated in the following example where we show the QQ plot of the logarithmic returns of the S&P 500 index ETF share price.
some difference in distributional shape may be deduced from the plot. For example if the reference distribution has heavier tails tends to have more large values the plot will curve down at the left and or up to the right. The chart next to the QQ plot shows the QQ plot with a regression fit, and confidence intervals, it shows the extent of heavy tails as well. The function GEV distribution estimate has max x low, and x up, with a confidence width 0.95, it examines the profile likelihood for estimated Xi parameter over the range x low, and x up. Also included are lines corresponding to the maximum likelihood, and a confidence profile likelihood interval for parameter estimate Xi, by default 95% confidence. In the lower left the empirical distribution fit is leptokurtic, and the modeled GEV fit can clearly seen to be capturing the full width of extreme tail events while ignoring the central mean mode and median moments. The returns level chart shows confidence intervals for the GEV distribution fit for example, the following obtains normal approximation 95% confidence intervals for the parameters of the GEV distribution fit, fit to the S&P 500 index ETF data. The returns for our events could give money back. Naturally, this is not the correct interpretation. In fact, there is nothing to prevent the normal approximation interval from taking on irrelevant values. However, the normal approximation is generally not appropriate for return levels associated with such a long period. The profile likelihood and parametric bootstrap methods are better suited to the task. Indeed, intervals obtained from the parametric bootstrap have the property that they will preserve the natural range of the data giving more realistic bounds. In this case, using the default replicate sample size of 1000, the interval is about from 200 days to 1000 days. The label shows years it is mislabeled it should be days. It estimates a significant number of extreme events from the 3% every 200 days to above, both up and down to 10% below 1000 days. These changes occur in a day. 